Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, joining me today is my co-host, Angela Andrew. Hello, Angela. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. Glad to be here today. Great. Now, Angela, this is a unique coffee break because it's Friday. It's a wrap-up session. Could, could you explain what we're going to be doing? Yes. Absolutely. So what we're going to be doing every Friday is Vanelli and I will be co-hosting the show together. We'll be going over some of our edits from earlier in the week, answering your questions, and giving you any pertinent updates that have come our way that we feel that you need to know about. Um, the first thing is, is if you are a Mac user, if you're running Mac OS, you'll want to know that we have a known issue with the Big Sur update. So I want to encourage you, if you have not run that update, go ahead and give it a week or two. And I always recommend that not just for our software, but for anything that you have that's time sensitive. If this is a work computer and your day-to-day -day living depends on being able to get things done smoothly, make sure you wait a couple of weeks for big updates before you run them because it will you know, give you a little bit of leeway in case there's an issue or a conflict between the new operating system and any of the software that you rely on. If you have already run that update and are experiencing issues, just know that our team is on it. We are working on a hot fix and we should have it out within a week or so. So um, right now the one known issue is that you can't export from any of our applications. Um, like I said, the hot fix is coming for Luminar 4 and Aurora HDR 2019 and Photo Lemur 3 will be a little bit, um, a little bit later after that, but we're on it. If you have anything else that you come across besides that export issue, please reach out to support at skylum.com and our team will be very happy to help you. So that's big news number one. So Vanelli, what do you have to share with us today? Well, um, so for our wrap up session, what we decided we were gonna do is review the images that we did um, throughout the week. And we came up with, um, I'm on the, you're the odd one, right? Yeah, you're the odd days, I'm the even <laughs> days. So um, yep. we're gonna review the ones that we did and we're hoping people will ask a bunch of questions and we'll be able to answer those from there. All right. So let me share my screen. And all right. So here's a young couple in love. Let me do the real quick edit. There it is. Or is this the one? There we go. All right. So the one I did was on how to how to create a rich black and white photo. And thankfully, I saved my own template. So all I had to do was one click, and now I'm back exactly where I was when I created this. So with this, let me go to the edit menu, or the edit tab. To create rich and black template, to create a rich, truly rich black and white image, the goal is to make sure that we use a lot of contrast, and we make sure that we Deepen the shadows, make them look rich, and make sure the blacks look blacks and the white looks white. So, of course, we have our black and white tool that's here, but that's just part of it. And you can come through, and each of the colors, you could change them. Like, we know red is in the face. So if I start changing or adjusting the reds, look at this. Not, well, the train, of course, is red, too. Notice I can make it richer you know, deeper and darker, or I could bring it out and make it brighter. So while working with black and white images, you still have access to the colors to make the tonal range. And we did bring out that super contrast is gonna be one of your best friends in situations like this. Look, look at that. Look, look, especially his white shirt. Um, instead, of, instead of just the one Oh, let's see, where are we? Up here, light tool. Here it is. Instead of having just the highlights here with super contrast, you have access to highlights, midtones, and shadows. And that right there makes a huge difference when you're trying to really make a beautiful black and white. So that was my one tip, Angela. Do you wanna you have a awesome? You have a, a tip on Aurora? Um, well, we're going to look at Aurora next week, but today I want to talk about, go back and just oh. quickly revisit the adventure photo that I did earlier this week and how to add drama and anticipation. So if you want to go ahead and share my screen there, Vanelli, that would be great. All right. 
So we've got this really, really beautiful picture of the hiker out on an adventure, quite possibly a once in a lifetime trip. And, you know, there's times when you get back to the computer and it just, you don't have the awe and the emotion that you felt when you were standing there when you captured the picture. So we went through and this is the after version and we made several really quick and small changes. So here was the before and then here's the after. It just added a lot of life to the image. We made use of those sun rays. And like I told you earlier this week, make sure those sun rays are integrated in such a way that they are coming in with the direction of the sun and you back it off enough to where nobody really knows that you added artificial sun rays. I want them to enhance the picture, not detract from it or distract. So we did that. Now, one of the comments I got on this image when I was looking through the comments after we were live was that one person thought that this was a little bit over the top. And, you know, everybody's taste is different. I tend to like a really bold image, but not everybody does. So you can always go over here into the edit menu and go ahead and let this pop up. Like, hold, I'm waiting for my, my template lo to load here. But what you can do is this slider down here. And if it doesn't load, just a heads up that we're running on the beta. So sometimes there's little glitches, things don't work quite right because we're still ironing out all of those little things. But you can take this slider down here in the bottom right and back that off to the point that you think is good. Now, the other thing you could do is if you like everything about this image, but you think the color is a little bit over the top, you can always go here to the color tool, maybe pull back a little bit on the vibrance if you think that's a little bit much. All right, there we go. My, my slider down here came up. But you can pull back on that vibrance and you can also go into HSL. And let's say those yellows are just a little bit too dark for you. You can go here to the HSL and go to saturation and just work with just those yellows and maybe pull those back a little bit and then we can pull back on the overall effect a little bit more. So it gives you a lot of flexibility depending on what your particular taste is and how you want that finished image to look. My interpretation is of course, just one way to do it. You're gonna see it differently and each one of us is gonna process it a little bit differently. And I wanted to show you a couple of those extra things you could do if the initial result, especially if you click a template is too strong, use that slider down there in the bottom right to just pull back those effects a little bit and get it right to where you want it. So what do you think about that, Vanelli? Oh, that was great. All right, Angela, you know what we'll do is let's answer just a couple quick questions. Absolutely. So, right, do you wanna read it? I, oh, there it is, it's up on that screen. All right, do we have a release date for Luminar AI? I so want it right now. Well, <laughs> you know what, we would love to give it to you right now, but as you just saw, there's still a couple little quirky things happening with the software and we're still in beta. And we wanna make sure we get everything just right before we ship it out to you. Right now, we don't have an official release date that we can share, but we are on track by uh, for delivery by the end of the year. Yes, and let, let's delivery by <laughs> the beginning. Yeah, so let, so if you want to, <laughs> I'm trying not to make promises I can't yeah. keep. <laughs> so um, the goal, the, let's put it this way: you're going to be happy. So you'll ha you'll have it in time to take incredible Christmas photos, edit them send them to your families um, and you know go from there. So that was one and our good buddy David asked, um, will AI have layer, will AI have layers and masking? All right, um, and the answer to that is, which let me, let me share my screen, good. So here's the image I did last week um, and I'll go through this in a moment, but notice each of these tools right here has the ability to have a layer mask, all right? So each of these tools have the ability to have a layer mask in them. So I'm hoping that does, David, answer your question that yes, it'll, um, AI, you can use the layer masking with it, all right? Well, while I have the screen, this was shot by uh, Elia Lacardi. I love this image, I wish I took it. We talked about color. And if you look at this right here, this is what I'm sure, well, the camera photographed, it's a JPEG. The camera photographed that, but I'm sure Elias saw this. And he thought, you know what? I'm gonna really make this, these colors pop. Now, what I did do with the colors is, of course, I came down and I used you know, the regular color, the color tool here to where, let's see. I'm sorry. Nope. I went to the Pro Tools. That's it. Um, 
I'm losing track of where I went. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so with a vignette, we bopped out some of the golden hours. Uh, I, I did do the haze. So notice that's action, that's adding the tones that I wanted, but I came through. Here, one moment. Okay. I, I, that super contrast helped out a lot. There we go. So look what super contrast is doing for us. Look at that. So by enriching the, the highlights and the shadows, it's making that color just come to life. And if you notice down here, with what we talked about with Angela did earlier, instead of going at full strength or no strength, I cranked it up to about 70 to 80 percent. All right. So we have that set in. And again, I originally started, in fact, I'll come over to the history tools. Um, when we originally started, we used the sunset template. So, and what's really good about the history tool here is you could use it to go back in time to see what you just did. So here, here's the original image. Give it a second. And then, there we go. I used the template template, uh, sunset template from here, uh, uh, Accent AI. I'm gonna move up a little bit more. Super contrast. Here's where the color harmony, that's what it was. And the color harmony was a little too much. So, boom, I brought it back a bit. And then by the time I got to the very, very top, here we are with the, the images where we brought it back and forth. So if you run into a situation to where you're unsure of how you edited something in Luminar, just go right back to the history. It's going to keep a, a history state of everything you've done from beginning to end. And you could go back to it and pick up where you left off. All right. All right. Your shot. <laughs> Well, the history tool is a really great way to go back and, you know, if, especially if you like something you did and you can't remember what it was and you want to do just that same little tweak to another image, you can go back in your history and see, okay, that was a super contrast. And now when you move over to a different image, you can apply similar settings there too. So, um, but let's go ahead and jump into the other image that I did earlier this week, which was a black and white architecture photo. Oh, I love this And one. this one was captured by another one of our, our ambassadors. And I believe it's a museum in Valencia, Spain, which is just such a cool structure. And I find that black and white is the best tool to really accentuate the lines and curves and shapes in really unique architecture. So let me go ahead and show you what we had here to begin with. There's the before, which is a neat shot, but it feels like more of a snapshot. By taking it to a black and white and a nice contrasty black and white, we're able to really define those shapes and the shapes become the story as opposed to, okay, it was a sunny day. You can see that you can see through the building and see the blue behind it. To me, the color is distracting in this instance. So there's the black and white. The way I got there was I used a template and I believe it was under, let's see here. It's not loading again for me. Give me a moment here. Yeah, I know. Just, I wasn't patient enough. There we go. When I did mine. <laughs> now, it, now it loaded. It was called Black and White Streets. So that one was under, I believe that was under Big City Lights here. Yep, Black and White Streets. And then we made a few little edits here. We can go back into our history and we can see that we adjusted our structure a little bit. We did some smart contrast, some accent AI. And then we really dialed in that contrast with the super contrast tool. You can ignore these saturation ones up there. That's what I was just doing to make sure this slider down here popped up where it was supposed to. So uh, one of the comments I saw on this image after the fact was somebody didn't like the sky in this. And I'm not sure what it was that they didn't like. I never got a follow-up answer, at least not that I've seen. Um, but it really depends on what you're trying to go for. So like when I do a black and white, especially when I'm working with a really blue sky, I like to take that blue and make it really dark and bring, you know, just bring out that contrast and make that a dark part of the image because the sky is really not what's interesting. It's all of these shapes down here on the building. Um, but I'd be really interested to know any feedback you guys have on this, if you would take it darker, if you like it lighter, 
again, it's all down to personal taste and this is just one interpretation of what you can do. Now, something else cool we can do when we have a, black, a color image turned black and white is we can pull back on this slider down here and then we can get a really faded look. So that actually looks kind of neat right there too. You pull it back to about 60 to 70% and you get this really fit dark faded look that's also very contrasty. So if you wanna bring back in a little bit of element of color, that's a fun way to do it as well. So what do you think about that, Vanelli? Dude, that was great. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I've always loved that image that you showed on that one. All right, a couple of quick questions. Yeah, fun. Okay. Um, can we still add clouds to things? And I apologize if it looks like I'm looking <laughs> off camera. Just before we went live, what a minute before the show, my main monitor decided to uh, go dead on me. So I apologize if I'm not looking directly at the camera. But Angela, you want to answer that? Can we still do clouds in a photo? Absolutely. So similar to what we had in Luminar 4, if you're, you know, been with us for a while, we have our augmented sky AI and we have our sky AI. So sky AI lets you do a full sky replacement. So if I wanted to add in a sky with clouds on that image, that Valencia image, I could fill in that space and add something interesting up there in the sky. And also with augmented sky, that allows you to pop different objects into your sky, anything from clouds to birds, planets, all sorts of cool stuff. So it's a really fun tool to work with. And those are there. And they they will look pretty much the same as they did in Luminar 4. But they've had some under the hood improvements that should make them faster, make those edges, those selections even better, and give you more reliable results. Great. And yes, um, we do have support for Photoshop and Lightroom. As of now, those are the only two um, that we're dealing with for the uh, direct support. Of course, Aurora is supported. It's our own product. Um, as for Infinity and On One, Topaz, as of right now, we want to stay laser beam focused on getting you the best AI product out there. You're the first editor that's completely AI. Um, so we want to make sure all of that's done perfect before we make promises on other programs. And there's workarounds, of course, with that. You could easily do all your editing inside one or the other, or add it inside Photoshop, bring, leave it as a smart object, bring it back and forth from Luminar or to any of your other um, programs or plugins that you want to use. All right? Yep. Let's see. Good. Thank you, guys. Oh. All right, Angela. We can't do this today, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll let you answer that. Yeah, we... We will, we're, we've got that on our docket for later on. Since we're still in the beta, there's certain things that aren't fully functional yet. Um, but we have the texture overlay tool. Um, and that can be used to composite different things together, not just adding texture. So we'll go into that at some point here in the future once that part of the software is uh, fully stable. Ooh, Robert, great suggestion. Can you save a snapshot from the history tool? That's cool. Now, you could do it with screen capture. You could capture your screen. Um, sure. That's I like that, Robert. That's a really good. I'm going to throw that. I'm going to talk to, and I'll make sure you get credit for that. Um, uh, I'll, I'll I'll mention that. I do like that idea because then you can, if you take a snapshot of what you just did, and then go back and do some all these other changes, you can always go back to what we originally did. So we can mention it. Exactly. So what, what we're discussing virtual copies. It won't be in this release, but that's something we talked about in the past. All right? Right. Let's see. Thank you. All right, and David again. If it's a cloudy sky, can you replace it with a blue sky and then edit to black? You know, I believe you can. There's You might have to manipulate the sliders there in the sky AI tool a little bit to go ahead and get full coverage over any clouds that are already there and replace it with a completely flat sky. But I do believe you, you can do that. So that's awesome. You know, it's funny because when Angela and I talked earlier before this, um, I was mentioning to her that uh, I don't think we were going to take that many questions on YouTube because unlike the other platforms we have well, during Zoom, we were doing live face-to-face -face questions. Um, but I like this. I like how we're able to do it in... in, in, in um, real time like this. And if you have questions about, and by the way, there's 30 people, 
please hit that thumbs up for us. Um, you'll help us out tremendously. If you like these episodes or if there's things you want to learn, please leave those in the comments and we'll make sure that we get to them and try to add them into the episodes. All right, here's another one. Definitely. Angela? Can you duplicate images and keep an original? All right, so the way that I would do that, there's no way to do that with from within the software, but you can right click on any image. And if you're on Windows, it'd be show in Explorer. If you're on Mac, it'd be show in Finder. And then you can go into your file structure, this right click on that file that you just found and tell it to duplicate there. You might have to restart Luminar to get your catalog to refresh, but then both copies of that image will show. And that way you can have multiple versions of an image. It's not the ideal situation right now, no. but again, with the engineers <laughs> focusing on pure, it, you know what I feel like? I feel like it's this, I feel like Luminar AI is a high performance race car. And, and I'm getting a little <laughs> nervous because it's like every ounce counts and so i put on a little weight during corona <laughs> during this so i'm worried that they're gonna trim me down that's why they came up with the body ai um <laughs> to trim it down but what i what i think is really cool is the team is doing everything they can to remove waste you know anything that slows the slows it down they're either rewriting it or getting rid of it so i think that's a really cool approach that they're going with. So by the time we're done, we're going to have an extremely powerful, and very fast AI tool. And then when we add new stuff to it, it'll make it much easier for, for us to do future changes. Because like you do know, and you've seen this already, so we can talk about it. Um, Sky AI is absolutely phenomenal. Wait till you see Sky AI 2.0. Because now we're going to oh deal with gonna be I mean, amazing, right? The reflections on the water. What else did you <laughs> notice with it, Angela? Oh, you can add motion to the water, like ripples. That was cool. So, so cool. Yeah. So if you, it was in the past with Photoshop, you could do it, but it was complicated. You know, you had to add motion blur. Um, there was like a four or five step process that you had to go through. Yes. And when you did it, oh man, did it look beautiful? You know that of course you did motion blur. And then a, a Gaussian blur with a gradient. Here they do all that stuff ahead of time, and and you just yeah, it's all done for you. It. So good, Russell yeah, says. Yeah, it's, it's going to be amazing save. at Sky Sky AI two point I'm super excited for that. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much for your questions. Wait one second. Yes. Oh, <laughs> all right. So this actually is a good question on this. Um, if okay. it's so powerful, we may not be able to run your machine. We do have the specs. So if you look, mm -hmm. even even right now, right, if you go to Skylum.com and look at Luminar 4, we have the same specs as what we're doing with They're a little AI. bit different for Luminar AI. Make sure you go to Skylum.com and then click on Luminar AI in the header. At the very bottom of that page, you'll see all of the required specifications. There are a few changes compared oh. to Luminar 4. Let's see. Well, yeah, so in other words, I think what we did was we got rid of the minimum. We bumped up the minimum, correct? I do believe the minimum was bumped up. And also, we're only going to be supporting Windows 10 from Luminar AI forward. Windows 7 and 8 support will be dropped. Oh, here it is. You're right, Angela. Not yep. that I doubted you. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> yeah, so here it is. So, yeah, we went to, like she said, uh, Skylum.com. One moment. Let me get rid of all this for you. There we go. All right. So at the very bottom, at the very, very bottom, you'll see here tech specs. Yeah, so here is what you need. Okay, look, the RAM is 8 gigs. Preferably 16 is recommended. That's yeah. something, you know, important to note that, yes, it will run with eight gigs of RAM. You're not going to have super speedy performance with that. The goal is we want people to be able to load the software and use it. But if you have a lower equipped machine, it's not going to be as speedy as somebody who has 16 gigs or more of RAM, a dedicated um, graphics card and an SSD. So those are the things that are really going to make a big difference. It will run with the, the minimum specs, but it's not going to be. Zoom, zoom. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, you know what's funny about that is our good friend Jim Nix, which everyone 
knows and love. Uh, he just upgraded his system, and he was like amazed at the speed. So we have a couple right here, real quick. Um, okay. Do you want to answer that? Oh, let's see here. Sorry, it's on my other screen. Uh, let's see here. Were you talking workflow when answering, John? Will it still work as an extension to the Photos app? Yes. If you're on Mac and you're using Photos for Mac, it will work as an extension. And I've tried it out. It does work. Good job. That's well, guys, thank you. a lot of my iPhone photos. Guys, hello, Germany. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate this. And like I said, throughout the week, Angela has the odd days, Monday and Wednesday. I have Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then we'll come up, we'll join together and we'll have a recap of what we did. That'll be, this will be like a questions and answer, almost like what we did last time, right? With the after hours coffee break. Yes. Right, very yeah, similar. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and if you've already purchased Luminar uh, AI and you're part of the early bird, the early bird special, right? They did that. Um, mm -hmm. Luminar Insider was included. Am I right? Well, I think everybody who's pre-ordered can get into Luminar AI Insiders. One of the big perks for the first 30,000 people who pre-ordered is they're actually going to get the software earlier than everybody else. Uh, so that's, I think, the big difference. But I think everyone who pre-orders can get into Luminar AI Insiders. That's at insiders.skyland.com. And as long as you meet the criteria to join, we'll go ahead and let you in there and be happy to see you. Awesome. Yep. And then and, and there's when we're doing a lot of the Zoom one-on-one uh, -on -one open for forums like this. But great job, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us. And please hit that thumbs up. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. All right? Yeah. Well, guys, have a great weekend. All right, everyone. All right, bye, everyone. Thank you.